Hello, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm going to show you what you can learn from the Nick Kyrgios toss. Now, this video is courtesy of Liam Apolato over at Court Level Tennis. Make sure you subscribe to his awesome channel. I put his link in the description below. Now, I absolutely love his service motion. It's probably my favorite part of his game. And I think it's something that if you start to copy not just his toss, but also his service motion in general, your serve is going to improve. So let's check out first his toss time, just to get a, a, a general understanding of how high he's tossing. What I mean by toss time is I like to take the ball and put it at the top of a player's head and then start a timer. So here the ball is at the top of his head, and I'm going to start this timer. We're going to see how long it takes for him to hit the ball. And he contacts the ball at 0.68 seconds, right? So to give you context, um, let's look at like uh, Federer, for instance, is 0.83 seconds. So Kyrgios has quite a low toss, and I really like that. And one of the benefits of this is when you toss quite low, it forces your racket to have to swing fast. So a lot of players say, hey, you know, if I toss really high, I'll have more time to hit the ball. No, you have less time to hit the ball. And I'll explain that in a second. If you toss quite low, actually, you've got less time to swing. And that means you've got to swing really fast. And that's a good thing, right? Don't you want to create the environment where swinging fast is going to be in your best interest? So what he does is he actually tosses the ball quite low. If we look at this, let's go right there is the peak of the toss right there. So I'll put a little circle at the peak of the toss. And that ball, by the time he contacts, man, that's a short distance. By the time that ball drops, um, it's, I don't know, eight inches, uh, 10 inches at most. So that ball has not had a chance to drop and really gain significant rack, I'm sorry, significant speed as it's falling due to gravity. So what does that mean? He actually has a long time to hit the ball because the ball is sitting in the window of the racket. It hasn't had a chance to really accelerate. You see players, they'll toss the ball way out of the screen. And then by the time the ball is dropping, man, is it traveling fast. So it's actually more difficult to hit and it's actually more difficult to time. So what I would recommend you do is learn how to toss lower. And the way you do that is by moving your arm up slower. Realize that when you toss, you're just tossing from your shoulder like this. Toss with a very slow tossing arm. Since the ball is an inanimate object, it will only go up at the speed your arm travels. And so if you go up quite slowly with your arm, the ball will not go very high, which gives you less time to swing, which actually helps make your swing efficient because then you can't, you don't have the time to screw up the swing really. And it actually gives you, because you have very little time to swing, you have to swing fast, but then you have a lot of time to hit the ball because the ball is just kind of sitting there waiting to be hit and you're not having to time it as it falls. So really practice having your tossing arm go slower as it rises. The next thing I want to show you is how he's holding the ball. He is not holding the ball exactly like, let's say, like take an Evo Karlovich, where the palm is directly to the side. But we can see that his palm is at about 45 degrees, and it's even easier when the ball comes out of his hand. And we can see how his palm is not facing directly up, but it is slightly to the side. I'm a big fan of the idea of hold the ball like a glass of water. Really, Karlovich is the best example of this. And the reason is one of the problems players have is they flick the ball off their fingertips. And when the palm is up, then players actually bend their elbow as well. If you're someone who tends to flick the ball off your fingertips, hold the ball like it is a glass of water. That means really the only thing you're going to move is the shoulder just because anatomically when your hand is to the side, you're going to bend your elbow less and you're definitely not going to roll the ball off your fingertips. And one of the hallmarks of this, and it's very easy to see, is that there's very little rotation on the ball. I want you to watch the ball. Look how there's no rotation on this ball. In fact, we can see right here, there's the, I think it's like the Australian Open emblem and, and logo. Look how that ball is not rotating. I mean, it's turning a little bit, but it's, it's not spinning. And when you watch players with erratic tosses, they tend to have a lot of rotation on the ball, which means what? They're flicking the ball with their wrist and their fingertips, rolling it off their fingertips. So actually learn to toss the ball like a glass of water, like you're tossing the glass of water into the air and you don't want the water to spill, and work on having it so that the ball does not rotate at all. So it's 
just kind of like a dead ball in the air. And that's actually going to help you to be a lot more consistent. So work on having a very low toss. You can see where his contact point is. It's to the right of his head. I call this 1230, right? So that's 12, that's one, <laughs> that's two, that's three. So he's right in there at 1230 in between his shoulder and his head, right? You can see that. That's where his, his toss is. He's got the perfect angle between the arm and the racket. You see that with Isner, where the arm and racket are not in a straight line. And these are very common things that people talk about and know about. But I just wanted to show you how low his toss is, the way he's tossing it very slowly so the ball does not go high in the air, but also the way he's holding the ball so that the ball does not have a lot of rotation. Now, this video is sponsored by playercourt.com. If you want to play more tennis, maybe find a local league in your area to challenge yourself. Maybe find new practice partners or hitting partners, or even find a new coach who's close to you. Use my link in the description below, playercourt.com slash two minute tennis to get 50% off when you join. All right, three really simple concepts. First, raise your tossing arm slowly so the ball doesn't shoot way up into the air, but rather it stays pretty low. Again, that 0.55 to 0.9 range. And you can just film yourself serving and then look at it and see how long the ball was in the air from the time it got to the top of your head to the time you contacted the ball. Somewhere between 0.55 seconds and 0.9 seconds will give you the range of acceptability to make sure your toss isn't too low and that your toss is not too high either. When you toss in that range, it gives you less time to swing, which is a good thing. If you toss super high, and let's say your, you know, your, your time is 1.1 seconds, that's way too high. Now your rack is just sitting here waiting for the ball to come down. And then the ball's passing through the window of opportunity to hit the strings rapidly due to gravity's acceleration. So not only does it not promote you swinging fast when you toss high, but it actually is hard to time to hit the sweet spot. So that's not in your best interest. Raise your tossing arm slowly, you'll have to move your racket fast and you'll hit the sweet spot more often. The second idea is the way you hold the ball. You know, big mistakes I see, bending the elbow, flicking the wrist, rolling the ball with the fingertips. So try when you toss to actually hold the ball like it's a glass of water. Remember, we're gonna toss slowly. Imagine you're tossing a glass of water and when the glass goes into the air, you don't want the water to spill. So you gotta keep the, it upright and its orientation the same. When you hold the ball like a glass of water, you won't roll the ball off your fingertips, you won't flick your wrist. And if you just notice the difference in my arm, here my elbow is positioned where I can kind of do a bicep curl, right? But when my palm is to the side, now I'm not gonna bend my elbow because my elbow is more to the side as well. So right there, the only thing that's gonna move is my shoulder. So that's a really good thing. You see players all the time, they're flicking their wrist, they're bending their elbow, and the ball's going all over the place. Maybe they're in that range of 0.55 to 0.9, but their ball is all over the place. So hold the ball like a glass of water. It will absolutely make your toss more consistent. And one of the ways to know that you're doing this correctly is when you toss the ball, try not to allow the ball to spin. You don't want the ball spinning when it is released out of your hand. What I've noticed is that players with the most consistent tosses, on average, over 25 years of coaching, have the least amount of spin on the ball. The players who have very erratic tosses, one of the things you notice is that their ball is really spinning. Why? Because they're flicking with their wrist and they're flicking off their fingertips or bending their elbow. So try raising your tossing arm slowly, holding the ball like a glass of water, and you're gonna release around the top of your head, and then when you toss, try to toss it in a way where there's no rotation on the ball. Go out and film yourself. Film yourself serving. See how fast or slowly you're, you're raising your hand. If your palm is up and you're consistent, keep it. Don't change, you know, don't, if it's not broken, don't fix it, right? But if your palm is, is, is up and you're inconsistent, Try tossing with your palm to the side. Look at Ivo Karlovic. He's amazing. He's better at it than Kyrgios when it comes to the orientation of his hand. Where Kyrgios was at 45 degrees, um, uh, Ivo Karlovic, his hand, if, if not straight over, it's actually slightly down when he's releasing the ball. It makes for a super consist consistent toss. And try to toss the ball in the air where there's no rotation on the ball. You work on these ideas and there is absolutely no doubt you're going to gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.